Okay, so we've been looking at how to use repetition structures, the while, the do while, and the for. And now I'm going to show you something that we do very commonly uh, where we have one for loop nested within another. And this is really useful for creating tables, uh, processing matrices, and things like that. It just turns out that a lot of times you'll have tabular data in the form of a you know, row by column sort of thing. And uh, in this course, I usually have you do the tic-tac-toe program uh, using a two-dimensional array in this manner. So this will be helpful. And, uh, you know, it's, this is a powerful technique. You'll end up using it a lot. So let's suppose that our little sister is learning mathematics. She's really good. And she needs a uh, multiplication table. So our goal is to print out a multiplication table, write a program that will display it to the screen. So uh, let's think about this for a second. Uh, basically, we're going to have uh, a series of rows, and then each row is going to have a series of elements on the column, right? And so it kind of creates what's known as a matrix or a table. It's a two-dimensional uh, display. So uh, let's start with some pseudocode here. And so basically, I'm going to say, uh, let's see here. How do I put this in pseudocode? That's a good question here. So um, I think I'm going to do this inside out. So I know how to do a row, right? So draw a row, right? And then to do that, we're going to use a for loop to draw all the values in the row. The row. Okay? All right. Now, uh, to draw a table, I simply have to draw a series of rows, right? And uh, basically, let me change this a little bit here. So it's we're going to actually draw all the column values in the row. Okay? All right. Then to draw the table itself, we want to draw uh, multiple rows, right? So draw all the rows in the table. Whoops. I've been doing this all day, and I'm kind of running out of steam. But when I wanted to finish this one up. I've actually done a bunch of the advanced videos here. Okay, so uh, let's think about this now. Let's just do a 10 by 10 one. That's easy. So we'll create some variables. So uh, total row. Oops, and that's an int, and that's final. Final int total row equals 10. Final int total column equals total row. That means that it's going to be square every time. So if I come in and change this value, whatever it is, it'll still be a square table. Uh, just in case I didn't already do this in the video sequence, uh, when we use final, I forgot something, by the way, we use it to create constants. And uh, the con the convention is that we write constants in all uppercase. So let me go back and do that. So these are values that are never going to change in the course of the program. And uh, I couldn't remember if I'd already done this or not uh, with you uh, because I'm kind of, I forgot to do the nested loop video and I'm going back and doing it. Okay, so uh, we have the total number of rows and the total number of columns. And that kind of suggests that we're going to have a 10 by 10 multiplication table. So let's start first by just trying to create the table, and then we'll uh, fine tune it, okay? So I'm going to go back down into my pseudocode here, and we're going to write the for loop that runs across and does the row. So this is going to be for int column equals zero while column is less than 
total underscore column. And then that's going to increment by one each time. So column plus plus. Okay. And then I'm going to go uh, in here and uh, I don't really, well, I'm just going to go ahead and put these braces in. It's my habit to do that. I think that'll save us some trouble later on. Okay. Okay. So I've got my loop. Now what do I want to do? South tab. Only I'm going to change this to print F. And so uh, then basically I need to put in a percentage here for my variable, a field width. And I know that a 10 by 10 multiplication column, the largest number on it is going to be 100, which is three digits. So I should be able to use a field width of five. And because these are integers, it'll be D. And then now I have to do my value, okay? And so uh, let's just do for now uh, call as the value. But uh, you're going to see that uh, we'll change that here in a second. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and run our code and see what we get. Okay. Uh, pretty good. I've got a little issue here at the end. And we've seen this before, I think. Um, I'm hoping that you've seen it before. And I'm going to fix that by just putting a, a new line here outside of the loop. So at the end of the call, at the end of the row, see this is printing the row, so it's going across the columns. So at the end of the row, at the end of the row, do a new line to go to the next row. Okay, so we'll just go ahead and put that in. And that can just be a out tab like that. Okay. Okay, so so far so good. Uh, let's run it again. And uh, let's go ahead and look at our values now. Okay, so this is just my counter. It's going straight across. And uh, one of the things I have to do is I have to print a header on my table. I want to wait and do that at the end. Let's get the table up, and then we'll put a header and footer on it. Okay? So I'm just kind of thinking out loud here about how to do this. So uh, basically, I printed one, one row of the table, and this code prints the row. So let's go ahead and tab that to indent that. And now let's put a, a, another loop around that does many rows. Okay, so basically you have an inner column that goes across the row, printing one row out by printing each column. Okay, so draw all the rows in the table is the outer loop for int row equals zero while row is less than total row, row plus plus. Let's go ahead and put our block in right here. And we can indent this now because really those comments go with that code in the block there. Okay. And then uh, let's see. That's good. Okay. I think. Yeah, I have to. Uh, I forgot to put the closing one in there, so I moved it over and added the one for me. Okay, so we're good. So let's go ahead now and see what happens when we run this. Okay, we're getting somewhere. So I've got a table, and uh, now I just have to think about how to do the values of the table. So right now it's just printing out the row value. So let me show you something here that will kind of help with that. As I start running the outer loop, the row is set to zero. And then the column goes from zero to max column, right? And then on the next row, row is one. And the column goes again from zero to max column. So I'm going to suggest to you that really all we have to do, sorry, I've got that crazy mouse that keeps rolling off of the stupid stand is do this, row times column. So let's try this out. And now we'll go ahead and run it. And uh, looks like we're getting somewhere. So this is 0 times 0 
and then this is uh, uh, 0 times 1 through 9, and this is 0 through, uh, I'm sorry, 1 times 0 through 9, right? So you see that? So zeros, ones, two, threes, fours, five, etc. So we have a multiplication table. Okay, first thing I want to do is change the bounds. I got plenty of room and I really want my little sister uh, to learn how to do multiplication uh, up through like 15. So I'm going to go ahead and change this to 5. So there we go. We've got a good multiplication table. Now we just want to make it pretty. And uh, basically what we need to do is add a header and uh, a footer to it and uh, put column headings, right? So the first thing that I notice is it'd be kind of nice if I had a column heading here so you could read the table as uh, row times column. So I need to indicate what the row is, right? So we're going to put a number in there. Now I already have that, so that's pretty easy to do. And I know that the inner loop is printing the row. So I'm going to come on over here. And basically, that's something that I'm going to do uh, one time before the for loop runs through, right? So we'll go ahead and add a statement here to print one time before the inner loop. And it'll print every time for each row. So before the row starts, I print which row it is. And that's before the loop that prints the row. Okay, so again, South tab. And I think I'm probably going to want to use my printf again here. And uh, let's make this a little bit bigger. I'm going to just go ahead and copy this to save some time. Although I could type it pretty fast. So I'll just copy that over run up here, paste it in, and now let's make this 8, and I'm th again, this time I'm only printing the row, right, because that's which row it is. So let's save that, and uh, let's see, I think that I might want to uh, put a space or two in here. Let's do that right now, okay? Let's see, is that right? Yeah, you know, I, I made it 8, but really, I want just uh, about, it's going to be a single, did well, two digits, so 15, so it doesn't have to be that big. Let's put it back to 5, but we'll put some space after it, and um, let's go ahead and uh, put this vertical bar in here, and that'll form a kind of uh, border on my table. Okay. All right, here we go. Let's see if it works. Yeah, that's pretty nice, okay? I think it'll look better if I put a space before the vertical bar. And uh, so we're getting there. You see how, again, I'm doing this incrementally? Um, I could sit down and try to figure this all out. Uh, that's not bad at all. But... Um, you know, I can do it quickly with this sort of agile development approach where I got the code working and then I just started to refine it. Okay, I'm pretty satisfied with that. So uh, the next thing to do is to go ahead and create the header and the footer. And that's going to occur uh, one time, so that'll be outside of the outer loop before and after. Okay? Now, uh, I did create a table before with you. I don't know if you've seen that already or if that's in a later video uh, than this one. But um, basically, I'm just going to keep fiddling around with this until I get the right number. Uh, and one of the reasons for that is it's just going to be tedious to count my keystrokes. So I can actually figure out how many spaces there are here because if you notice... I'm printing uh, a five character field for each of the elements and I have 15. So 15 times 5 is 50 plus 5 times 5, that's 75. And so basically I have to print uh, 75 uh, 
separation space is here, you know, and that's a rough estimate, but I'll be close to what it is. So uh, we'll just try that here. Um, let's do this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Copy that. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, that should give me 70 characters. And uh, I'm not going to play it safe. I'm going to pretend that I got it right. So I'll just go ahead now and put it down at the end of the uh, for loop. And see that I put it in the wrong place right there because uh, I'm going to have this at the top and the bottom of the table. And uh, I'll go ahead and move this over so it's indented nicely. Okay, drum roll please. Let's see if our calculation was kind of close or not. Oh, it's off. Uh, you know what? I forgot about this stuff. So uh, basically it looks like I have one, two, and about a half, and each one of those is five, so I've still got that in my buffer, so one, two, oops, shit, what did it do here, somehow it, it jumped to the end of the line, I guess my insertion point wasn't right where I wanted it, okay, what the hell, Uh, you know what? I think the editor is uh, not liking the fact that I have all these lines here. So, uh, you know what? Let's just do this. Ah, no. I'm not going to do that. All right. Let me see where I'm at. i got my code all mangled up now. Okay. Um, oh, you know what? I don't want it to be jammed off to the side like that. So it looks like I need to bring this in about four spaces. So uh, again, I think the editor might be complaining I made the long line too long. Two, three, four. We'll come on down here. One, two, three, four. Let's run it again. And okay, we're getting better. And uh, whoops, how come the one at oh, I see. So I indented it too many. All right, so let's go ahead and backspace each of these one time. And then, all right, now I'm going to go to the end of the row and add the characters there and see if it'll let me do that. Okay, so. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. All right, come on down here. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. All right, save it. And we'll run it and see what it looks like. Oh, maybe. There we go. Awesome. So that's perfect. Okay, so now let's put a header on our table. And uh, this will be a little easier to do because we're going to use the for loop. And so uh, we'll be able to uh, set it up. Okay, so again, we have now a row uh, value. And uh, now we're going to put the column value in. And so um, let's. I wish I knew how I could just go right to that. Every once in a while, I'll click and it'll just close the output window for me. Or there we go. Yeah. Somebody maybe can mail me and tell me about that. Okay, so uh, we're going to put the table header right here, and uh, we're going to use the uh, similar loop that prints the columns, like that we had at the very beginning. So. Um, Basically, we can grab all this code, copy it, pop up here, insert an extra space there, move over there, and paste it in. Okay? And uh, I'm going to go ahead and un, un shift tab just to out tab that, uh, out indent that. Okay. All right. So, system out print line. Um, 
Okay, so what this actually is, is it's the beginning of my table. And I think what we can do is just make this a string of spaces. Okay, and so we're not going to actually use the printf. We're just going to use print. And we'll just print the spaces. And then we'll continue printing on the same line. That's we're using print instead of print uh, line. And then here you can see this is already set up to uh, print the column. We just need to change this here, the value that we're printing. So uh, that's looking pretty good. And now we need to not forget that we also need to uh, print a new line here. Now, in this case, the best way to do that, instead of having an extra print statement, is just throw the new line in there at the beginning of the next line. So I might get lucky and have this perfect the first time. Okay, so no, it's got to shift over a bit. So uh, we'll go back into the code. Ah, it worked that time. I'm getting better. All right, and let me just give this uh, one, two, three, four. Run it again. And there we go. It's perfectly lined up. That's really nice. So here's our nice multiplication table. And, you know, we should probably give it a title at the top here before the first row, too. And then we'll call it a day. So I'm very pleased. Uh, this worked out pretty nicely. And I hope you kind of see, again, this idea of incremental refinement uh, on our uh, development when we develop stuff. So uh, let me put in this last value here. South tab. Multiplication table for little sis, right? I like that. And uh, we can just jam this over here. I could center it if I wanted to. There's an easy way to figure that out. I could show you how to do all that stuff. In the old days when I uh, learned to program with uh, uh, basic, not visual basic, but basic we had to uh, manually format reports for the printer. And so you did all these weird calculations to center stuff and things like that. Um, let's see, let's just jam this baby over a little bit further so it's sort of centered. Uh, I'm doing that by hand today, but what I would do is I'd take the length of the table, uh, divide it by half, and subtract half of the length of the string that I was wanting to center. Okay, where's my, there's multiplication table. That's 10 more spaces. And it still can go quite a ways over, right? 10 more. There we go. That looks pretty nice. I'm satisfied. So I hope you are too. I didn't really see any reason to put a border on here. Um, we could do that, obviously. That's just adding an extra character at the end of the loop. That would be on the same statement that prints the new line to go to the next line. But I don't think it really adds much to the table. That's a pretty nice table there, I think. Okay, uh, that's a good one. And uh, about 20 minutes, that's a good time for a video. So you know what I always say, code on dudes.